we are going to do some questions and answers. You have already asked me a few questions and I will start answering them. And then later on, you can just add them in the comments and I will be uh, very happy to answer them as well. We are going to wait a couple of minutes just for everyone to join in because I don't want anyone to miss it. And um, then um, later on, I will also show you my beginning of the career as well uh, when I was doing really craft meals. <laughs> I will just uh, share it in a couple places. You can share it as well. And then we can uh, go and start this live with the Q&I. I will have some awards to win as well. A wee prize. <laughs> Okay, so that's me shared and I will be slowly starting it so you can guys just um, keep going with your questions and I will be checking them as well. I've got here a first question from yesterday when I put the post. Uh, I'm a beginner, I have seen your art skills and they are impressive. How do, I, how do I get better at nail art? So this is a fantastic question and um, for this question I have also prepared my old work like which have been really really crap. Uh, it wasn't anything nice to uh, start off. The main answer for this question is how to get better at the new art is practice. And it is a really key to the success, like practice, practice, practice. And I always repeated it. And you know, guys, like someone can sit and um, do the nails like, I don't know, maybe an hour a day. And it might take them five years before they will get a really good at the nail art and good at the nails. And the other people might sit like 10 hours a day and they will get amazing uh, within a year uh, at doing nails and nail art. So it is a really definitely a matter of the practice. And I have spent thousands, thousands of the hours practicing my skills. Uh, I've got some proofs uh, to show you uh, that as well. So uh, I will go and show you this, um, this nail art. But also let me check where are you? So I've got prepared for you those beautiful pictures <laughs> and I will start with the stiletto news so I hope the camera can catch it really well on the I'm horrible on the right hand side and yes on the right hand side you've got some pink news really really ugly news and that's how my news have been that's the first set of the stiletto I have ever done it like it even, even doesn't look like a stiletto nails. Yes, you can laugh in the comments. Um, they, they really bad, uh, those nails here. And it's the same hand because they have been done on my hand. Um, so no pinching, uh, swirly bits even don't look nice. And the crystals, the, the unevenness of it, like it's really bad and the same fingers. And then on the other side, you've got uh, one of the recent sets of the stiletto nails. So that just shows you a difference and I have been a beginner some time ago as well, so I'm not even good. I wasn't even good at the nails when I started uh, because no one is like you need to do really practice and spend this time to be able to to make a beautiful nails. OK, so I've got also another picture ready for you guys. And that's a one stroke. So you have seen me doing one stroke so often. Um, in the recent um, days and I get lots of questions they're like oh I wish you paint such as beautiful one stroke and everything and here's my first one stroke it is really ugly it looks like a cabbage look at this <laughs> so that's my one stroke flowers here the orange cabbage or an orange splash of the color it even doesn't look like a rose and then if you look on the other picture you can see a really nice and beautiful rose so again, that's that just shows you and proves you that first of all, right products. And here, like uh, you can really see, the paint was so thick, it was so slidey, it was so comfy to to paint it and achieve a really nice uh, work with it. So here, it was a definitely also a wrong product uh, product use. 
and then obviously with the right products and the technique, the training and uh, everything, you can improve your skills and you all can get really good uh, at the one stroke. I mean, if your flowers look like this now, like the orange cabbage, that's mean within a few years time, you can do them like this because I did it like, you know, like I, I wasn't born like with some amazing skills and a talent. Like I'm reading all those nice comments from you. Like, oh my goodness, it's such a like great talent on painting the one stroke. I have learned how to do it. And I'm doing this channel so you're able to learn how to do it as well. And now during the lockdown, obviously we are in the lockdown as well. It will be very helpful for you to sit and practice. And I wanted to give you this motivation. That's why I'm showing you those old pictures with my old work. So you're able to, to see it and believe it in yourself because we all have been a beginner sometime like when we start the career, like no one is like nail technician just like this over the night. It, it takes some uh, hours, days, months of practice. And um, there's a really one more important thing which I wanted to tell you and regarding of the old work, one of uh, really well known and uh, new interesting person as well commented on one of my posts where I had some, they were actually fun meals, but just don't really ugly. Uh, maybe not ugly at the time. I was really proud of them, you know, because it was maybe like um, seven years ago. Uh, it was like um, the colorful pencils, different colors on each nail and then some lines going on. And this person commented like, oh my goodness, those nails are so misshaped. But yes, they were misshaped. They were like my one of the first stilettos, you know, no pinch, like each, each nail a bit different. One was wonky, the second one was uneven. And I knew it at the time because when I posted the picture, say it was 2000, maybe 10. And then this person commented on this picture like, five or seven years later, where I already knew what I did wrong, where I could really see the difference in the current sets and this old set. And they commented like those all nasty kind of things. And I say to them, I do really know what is wrong with this, uh, with this set of the nails. I know that it's not pinch. I know that the shape is wonky. I know that uh, the surface is uneven, the apex is uneven. But I, and this person says, oh, if you know all that, why do you keep this picture on, on your profile and I say it's because I want to remember how what journey I took to become a good nail technician I don't want to remove these pictures yes they are embarrassing for me at this time like really sorry if someone I'm selling the trainings how to do the one stroke yeah and then someone see like oh my goodness how she can sell something if she did paint it so just disgusting flowers but that's because like I want to keep it because I want to show you guys that we can all achieve it uh, with the practice, with the right tools, with the right technique. And that's why I keep all those uh, old pictures. And it's a memory for me as well um, to show that if we want really something uh, and if we will really work hard through it, we will achieve our dreams. Yeah, I'm kind of the person which believes in dreams. And uh, I always say it's like, there is nothing in this world where your um, imagination and hard work cannot, cannot turn into reality. Uh, so anything you believe with, and any dreams you've got, if you will work hard enough, you will achieve it. Okay, so this is a little bit motivation video as well, because we all um, we all kind of feel a bit down. We all feel a lack of motivation. I find it myself as well. Like sometimes, oh, I can't be bothered to record, and then Patrick is like, "Come on, come on, we have to do it <laughs> at least this many videos a day." So I was like, "Okay." Uh, so I'm, I'm licking this motivation as well. So I want to really motivate you in this video uh, that this is the best time for you to practice and to achieve the success because the other nail technicians or the people which want to become the nail technicians, they might be lazy now in the house, you know, fireplace on, glass of wine, remote control, and they might be just watching a Netflix or, you know, do all lots of different things. And to you in this time, going to watch this video and going to practice. So once the lockdown is lifted, we are going to be much better. We are going to be upfront and with our, maybe not competition even, you know, I don't treat like uh, even the sounds around, like we really, I try to really live with them so friendly and, and all, but you will be upfront on of all those people which have been with the TV remote control you will be uh, much more skilled because you have been practicing uh, all your skills. I need to actually check, guys, what you are writing to me as well. Um, so actually, I will do that now. And oh, I, quickly, I show you the Disney work as well, because I think this is awesome. 
So here you can see my first Mickey Mouse, some cow and a sweet kitty. Um, that's how I used to paint Disney characters. And then on the other side, you've got the Ariel. So that's how I'm painting the Disney characters now. And uh, this was acrylic paints, uh, uh, acrylic paints design. Again, it just shows you uh, that with the practice, you can really improve the skills. I'm going to show you one more, but I need to check what else you're asking me as well. And I need to tell you about the competition. I'm actually excited, guys, uh, about all this stuff. But let me find the live video. So there we are. Just to see what is going on in there. Okay, I've got you here. And where are the comments? Patrick, help me find the comments. I'm useless when it comes to the technology. <laughs> and we've done it so well. I was actually scared, guys. Uh, I was actually really scared um, to do the live from the house. Uh, because normally when we do the live from the house, uh, I'm scared um, with the internet, um, how strong the internet is going to be. Because uh, we live in between the mountains, so there is not much, not much, I can't find it, oh my goodness, there is uh, not much good signal, so quite often it is a really bad disturbance when we're doing the live, so this one is going really smooth so far. And I'm just checking your questions. Do you got it, Patrick, on the phone? Yes. Can I have your phone then? <laughs> I need your phone. I want to see what the people are asking me. Come on, don't be bad boy. I need it. I need it. I need to see who's in with me. Okay. I'm useless when it comes to the technology. Oh yes, I've got all the comments here. Ah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so awesome. I've got Lee, we can't wait. Hello, hi, hi from Germany. Hello everyone. Okay, hi guys. I wish I could hear her better. Okay, sorry Mandy, I'm going to speak louder. Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, speak louder. I've got Nancy which says, uh, would you recommend that glitter poly gel over hard gel glitter? Thanks and have a blessed Sunday. Okay, so the question is, would you recommend that the glitter poly gel or hard gel glitter? Uh, they are two different, different products and different things. I personally prefer working with the hard gels. So if the recommendation is coming from me, I would say I would recommend the hard gel where you mix the glitter. And for the people which are more used to the poly gel, they will prefer the poly gel. Um, so there is not really a difference. It's the same like, would I prefer the glitter acrylic or glitter gel or glitter poly gel? Again, I think it depends what is your favorite system. So if you're working with the acrylic, just choose acrylic. Um, what I like about any of those systems that you can mix it your own uh, custom glitter. So, um, I don't, I'm not the person which likes to stock like uh, 10 pots of different colors glitters or, or 20 different colorful acrylics or other, like even the, paint, the gel paints. Um, I don't like to have a full desk of the colors. I want to have like couple products and then I can mix my custom colors. I can mix my custom glitters. So I would use a clear gel and add then like I've got like small pots. So I would say I've got thousands of those glitters. I would just mix them and um, as I go and create the set, like I, I think this is a best option. So even if you're working with a poly gel, I would probably uh, use a clear poly gel and then add there like some loose uh, glitter, encapsulate some loose glitter. So then you've got lots of color choice uh, as well. So that's your questions answered. Stiletto nails are, oh gosh, I'm behind. Um, Stiletto nails are gorgeous, Patricia. Yeah, but the, the blue one, not the pink one. The pink ones have been so bad. I've got Kirsty, hi, hi, hi. Hello, everyone. And then here I've got another question from Kavita. Um, beginner nail tech, what advice would you give me when doing cuticle application? So for a nice cuticle application, uh, you will need to work really nice and thin. So depending what system you are using, see if, 
if you're like me, a gel technician, you would work really nice and thin layer, nice and thin layer around the cuticle area and around the side walls uh, of the nails. So like the thinner, better, because you don't want to see any place, any catchy bits and um, any place where there's a jump, like the cuticle area has to be really flush to the natural nail. It cannot have any um, raised area. It needs to be almost like a blend into the natural nail plate. And first of all, it is uh, preventing any kind of lifting because if the client's got any catchy place, uh, this place might lift easier. But if your product around the cuticle area is really blended well um, with the file, of course, after we finish the application, uh, then those nails last really, really long time. So small amount of the product. And same, if you're working with the acrylic, you would do your two, three beads application and work very uh, little product around the cuticle area. That's the main thing, like the cuticle area are really nice and, and, and thin, and then gradually it comes out into the apex, uh, but gradually, so you don't have like a huge bump. Uh, it comes up on the mountain and then stays and then comes down a little bit. That's the tip I can give you when it comes to the cuticle. And then I've got, it just shows the difference a lot of practice makes. Definitely like practice is all the key to the success, like 100%. I can always get my nails shaped beautiful, but when I go to polish them, they always end up wonky looking. I do thin coats. Any suggestions to fix this? Okay. So the question from the question from Mandy is: When she does her nails, uh, they look really nice and beautiful. But once she applied the polish over them, then the, any imperfections are showing up. So the, there's uh, she's looking for suggestions how to fix it. So. She says she applied the gel polish really thin. So if she applies the polish really thin, that's mean the unevenness cannot be from the wrong gel polish application. Because sometimes what's happened is we make a perfect nails and then when we apply the gel polish and it's uneven, it is going to obviously misshape the nails. But prop, uh, my question is, do you buff the nails? Like by buffing, I mean not buff to high shine, but like buff file the surface with the buffer so they smoother. Uh, I find that just a file doesn't make the perfect surface for a nails. Um, extra buffing makes them really uh, much nicer. And my suggestion from is, uh, my suggestion for this question is do it the same way I do it for a chrome application. When I want to do a chrome application, the chrome shows any kind of imperfections. Like when sometimes, you know, like I'm in a rush and there's not much time and client comes in to me and says like, oh, I want beautiful chrome. I'm like, oh my goodness, chrome, chrome. Okay, for a chrome, you need to spend those extra couple minutes to get the surface like absolutely perfect. Because even the smallest imperfection is going to look like a double after the chrome, uh, chrome um, is on top of the nails. So do it the same way. Like once you have finished your nails and you think they are perfect and you are going to start painting your gel polish, put the gel polish back, pick up the buffer and give each nail like five seconds, five seconds with the buffer per each nail and then paint them because that's mean you thought they are perfect and then they are even more perfect because you have given them this extra buff. And um, that always helps me. So that's how I do my chrome. I would finish the nail and then buff them a little bit, try a couple seconds extra, and then I'm always happy with the application. Uh, what else I've got in here? I love the cabbages. <laughs> yes, Tracy, cabbages are best. Like cabbages are best, definitely. And uh, Kirsty, definitely. I got Tracy. I'm struggling with one stroke. Keep making videos. I'm determined to do to succeed at this. Tracy, you will. You will like really honestly. Like let's go back to my cabbages. So if you have missed it, so this is my one stroke. Come on, computer. The orangey, yellowish something. That's my one stroke when I started, and then that's my stroke. One stroke when it's done properly. Uh, so that just shows you the practice makes perfect. And I am, I'm started, I have finished my nail training in 2005. It was in December and January we came to Scotland. So that was a quick fix because I was like, you know, marketing the economic school. And then I quickly went to beauty. Olivia was little, uh, our daughter. So I, I was like in between, oh my goodness, I want to be with Patrick so much. Like I miss him so much because he left uh, to the um, Dublin, North Island. 
and I felt like, but also I need some paper, I need to have something which will give me a qualification. So I quit my economic marketing school and I went into the beauty school. But the qualification from the beauty school I would receive in a uh, summertime once the school finished. And I wanted to come and uh, see Patrick so quickly, like move away from Poland. So I jumped in into a two weeks uh, nail training. It was actually a great one and that was in 2005. Now we've got 2021. So that also tells you that's a 16. I'm, I'm horrible at the math. That's why I'm doing news. 16 years. Yeah, so yeah. that's 16 years uh, since 16. I'm doing the news. But to do them every day, I'm doing them since 2000. 10, 2009 we opened the salon it was december 2009 and by the time i got first client because yes i was so stupid we opened the salon with not even single client <laughs> um yeah it was a scary time uh, for us as well but anyway uh, yeah practice makes perfect so yeah i will be posting lots of one stroke videos because i love this technique i definitely love this technique uh, i then we've got i found one stroke it was all about getting the right brush and size Debbie says it was all about the brush. Yes, it is also about the brush because I find that the angular brush gives me a better shape of petals, kind of make the work easier. And another thing, it was the paints, these orange cabbages. They have been painted with, uh, that's another thing. When we are new nail technicians, and I was the same, guys, like, I mean, I, I really was the same. Uh, I went into eBay and buy the cheapest crap from China, like, uh, that was a set of the paints, I, I can't remember, but like in 2010, say it was, um, they cost me maybe five pounds, 12 colors, and I was like so happy, I'm going to paint one stroke, but those paints were so bad, they were so oily, so slidey, it was impossible to mix it, it really nice, uh, so it was just a waste of money, really, because I spent five pounds, and for this five pounds, I would have like, two almost two colors of the decent paint which i could only work with just two colors and you can see me working usually with the two colors so i would probably get the white and then the magenta the number 13 one and with these two colors i could create so many beautiful um one stroke uh, rather than buying a full package oh because i'm going to have 12 colors you know sometimes less less colors better quality is better choice than like going for a uh, the amount of the product rather than the quality of the product because I, I've just been those paints later on. I've got Jen. I find myself suffering from being disappointed and losing uh, belief in my abilities. I am always disappointed in my work. Honestly, I am. If you are not, if you are not disappointed with your work, you are never going to get it anywhere because you are kind of like you do a set of news. Oh, they're so beautiful. I don't have to do anything else. Like they just perfect, you know, and you don't practice. If you're losing like belief in yourself, like and feel like oh I I like I'm not happy with the set, like uh, then that's mean you will want to get and do it better. And I think this is a better attitude. Like really check this work. Like it wasn't anything nice. Wait till I show you the nails. If you can do better nails now, that's mean in the future. If you will practice the same amount of the hours I did, you will be able to do those kind of nails as well. So here we are. That's. And that, I, I was really happy at the time with this set of, uh, so you can see that's some sculpted nudes. <laughs> Sorry, they are really bad. With 3D flowers, with some flowers, with glitter encapsulations and a gems. Yeah, they're so misshaped, like they're so wide, they're wonky, they're disgusting. But if you can do nudes which look like this, or even better, <laughs> then you will be able to do the nudes which looks like uh, the ones with the chrome and the Swarovski pixie. So really believe, like believe in what you do. By the way, I did the two chrome lips. Oh, that's good. You did. And uh, you need to keep going, definitely, Jen. Like keep going and you will get there. Like I wasn't, I, I think you have sent me a pictures and it was like, oh my goodness, why she plays with such as hard stuff, like two different chromes. It is an easy task. Like it wasn't easy nail art, uh, so don't be hard on yourself as well. Like sometimes we might pick up things which are too hard at our level and um, stick to the bit of easier things, which something which will also give you a little bit of the happiness as well, but never give up. Like I, I would never give up. And then here I've got Lulu, which is, oh no, I messed here. Sorry, Iconico. I 
uh, I cannot read it in this language. And then I got Lou. I'm not a new tech, but I love watching your work. Oh, thank you. Excited advice, Jen. I just wanted to thank you for helping me keep going. Then I got Toti. I find that when I'm okay. Toti says I find that when I'm sculpting gel nails, some end up longer than the other nails. Can you advise what can I do to keep them the same length? So the first thing, uh, when you're sculpting the nails, you've got on the forms different lengths, and there is a size S, M, L, and XL. So when you're sculpting the nails, um, just apply the product to the same letter. So I would always sculpt my nails to the letter L. But, but <laughs> sometimes I need to trim my form, which means I need to make the form shorter so it fits in uh, on my white um, nail folds. And then I need to apply it longer than the letter L because I have cut it some part of the form. So I will apply it to the letter XL. I hope I don't make you confused. So keep applying the product to the same letter um, on your forms. So this way you will have the same kind of length. And then when you're filing, because this is really important, try to do everything uniform and exactly the same. What I mean by that? So you would do the nails nice and thin layer on all of them, then on all of them the apex, and then you remove the form on all of them, then you would file the free edge on all of them. So two, three movement of the file on the free edge, then the next nail, then the next nail, then the next nail. So every single step is exactly the same. Then you go back to nail one and you would file your side walls, side walls, nail two, nail three, and you keep going like this. Then go back to nail one and you will file everything around the cuticle area on all of them. This way you get a very uniform results for every single nail because you have been repeating each step and you've got kind of like a um, hand memory like a muscle memory i don't know how to <laughs> how to say it but um, muscle, memory. muscle memory yeah cameraman is good at that because he used to be a bodybuilder so your, your body remember what you have done and you will do it exactly the same um, th that's the best tip i can give you and that's how i was preparing for some competition as well i had to practice those um, consistency in my work because every single meal if it's wonky it has to be wonky in the same side if it's if it's um I don't know, a bit uh, um, slanted, then it has to be at the same side as well. So like sometimes the nails which aren't perfect, but they all exactly same, my one in a competition, than the nails which are really nice looking, but each of them is different, if that makes sense. Because consistency is really hard uh, thing to achieve. Then I've got, I'm gradually ordering all your products, brush, paints, and you sold, oh, thank you, Tracy. Yeah, it is an investment to to get like lots of different products. And I knew it myself when I started uh, a new technician career, like uh, it was like always a fortune spent on different glitters and things. And then I got, I agree with Jen, you keep me going and learning new things. I guys, I want you to keep going and I want you to keep practicing because look at this difference. Like, you know, that's when I started and that's what I can do now. And you can all do it. Like, honestly, you can all do it. Um, and then we've got face painting and also that's a wee price for you as well so the lady on the left or right the pink hair one i'm horrible when it comes to sight right. <laughs> yeah the lady with the pink hair um uh, this is a uh, training i would like to offer to someone so all you have to do is just share this view uh, share this channel and you can just pick up the link. So share this channel, hashtag Dorota Palska, so I can see this uh, uh, this post and then just write in the comment here that you have shared it, you have done it, and I will pick up one winner after the live is finished uh, to win this um, uh, face painting uh, training. And here you can also see it, my first, one of the first, it wasn't maybe first, the first one was probably even worse, but I, can't, I couldn't find it. So that's one of my first um, face painting. And then that's one of the latest ones. So you can also see the improvement. And when I was a child or when I was younger, I was always scared to paint the faces. It was something like I wouldn't be ever able to, to paint it. I wasn't bad at the art, like in school. I really liked it, art, uh, but I was never able to paint the faces. And the, the time when I learned to paint the faces, it was actually on the news. So yeah, the, the face painting training is um, for one lucky winner. 
if you share my channel, hashtag Dorota Paliska, and then write in the slide that it is done, and then I will pick up one winner. And what else I've got in here? I find that's when I'm okay. I've got this one. Hi from Holland. I love Holland. Netherlands is amazing. Eindhoven and Amsterdam. And you guys got such as beautiful clothes in there. Um, I, I really like Miss Netherlands so much. Absolutely amazing place. Been there lots of times. Hi from Chicago. I've got hi Kelly, Eileen. Hi. You have same issues, yeah. Then I've got, hi, hi. <laughs> and then I've got Kirsty, which is so oh, with the technology as me. Olivia is amazing at it. Like, you know, she, she's she's um, doing her computing in a school as well. And um, and then she's absolutely fi uh, fantastic. Iconic, I don't speak English. It's fine, just try to maybe put it in a translator, then I will be able to answer your question. Hi, hi. Then I've got Mexico. Hi, hi, hi. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm still um, going into the questions. First time on your life, your love your films. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, then I've got Patricia answering for a question about the gel polish. Why is uneven on the nails? Uh, she thinks she are not. Um, you are not putting enough gel polish on your nails. That's why it's uneven. See, it is really hard to put not enough gel polish. I'm not sure would that be the correct thing. Uh, because if there is any uneven surface, it will show even, even after a thicker, Quicker gel polish application. I, I don't think so. Anyone could pick not enough gel polish, but maybe I'm wrong. So I hope this helps as a tip as well. Then I've got another question from Totti. Any suggestions to make sure all nails are shaped? Okay, I have answered it. Uh... Okay, Janay, Janay, 1967, you need to help me because my language isn't perfect. She says, I must be prolific nail vlogger. You need to translate that to me into English. I have no clue what that means, but thank you. I hope it's something nice. Um, and, and she's also saying thank you for the dedication to the followers. I guess love you like I mean this channel wouldn't existed uh, existed without of you like this is all your work you keep me motivated and um, because I really didn't want to do it like I we started uh, putting we put it some first video like years years ago and that was because cameraman wanted and um, then I didn't put any videos like for years probably and then he says oh we should uh, start uh, doing the youtube again look the the first video got you so many thousands views it was actually really good that's the best uh, uh, the highest number of the views um, i was like no no it's so time consuming and everything but once i start seeing you all guys joining and all leaving such as great comments when you were starting hashtagging me in your work i did see how much it, it does mean to all of you and i was like you know, guys, we have created, like I, I say to Patrick, we have created kind of small community of, of a really great people. And I don't want to disappoint you. Like, I really want to continue because I, I, I really enjoy it now. And I'm so thankful to Patrick, like for, <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> He's laughing now. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. He really eventually says, like, you have to do it. And I don't it. And now I love it. I really enjoy it. Gosh, I don't want to miss any comments, guys. Um, it's not something we do often in the live videos. I'm actually happy the quality is not too bad uh, from the house, which means it's better than in a salon. It's so freezing now in a salon. Like, it's so cold because it's closed and I, I couldn't do the live in there. Um, what else I've got in here? Okay, Patricia did understood it. Right, how long does... Okay, <clears throat> sorry, I've got Mandy. How long does it take you to do a full set? Do you prefer tips or sculpted? Awesome questions. Takes me an hour and a half to two hours because I'm trying to get the right and prefer sculpted. Everyone in my area wants tips. Okay, so the answer for a Monday question is, 
I'm booking a client's a standard appointment. The clients are getting us an hour and a half. And 99.9% .9 of my clients books in for tips because they are cheaper. I'm, I'm charging more for a sculpted set. So I set on the tips. I'm booking a client's an hour and a half. And that's include my... Uh, that's include any broken nails, any design, any length, um, any, I don't know, any size of the nails, any size of the hands, because that's quite often uh, change uh, the timing as well. And uh, we break as well in between the next client. So it is an hour and a half for a full set. Doesn't matter what it is on this set. Uh, nails on tips. And then if someone wants a sculpted set, two hours I book and then again, it includes any nail art. The quickest I'm able to do a set of the nails, it was 35 or 36 minutes. Um, and that was uh, just a short almond nails. But it's also really depending on the size of the client's fingers. Like some people might have all the nails like pinkies and maybe index fingers, like the thumb will be a size of the index finger. And then it takes you much shorter time. It will also take you much shorter time if you are doing a very short extensions, like 45 minutes for a short French or 45 minutes for a short one color gel polish, up, um, gel polish on extensions. That's a normal timing. But then if the client comes in for like those fancy coffin shaped nails, there is no way like I need those an hour and a half with the design coffin shaped uh, and really long length uh, because it just takes longer. It's more product to apply, more filing to do because those nails are much longer. And I wouldn't be bothered about that much about the timing as long as you're charging your clients for this time. So don't rush yourself. Like I, I, I mean, like I've got maybe two clients which I'm always uh, giving those extra time, uh, and I. I don't charge them. I don't charge them for that. But I allocate 30 minutes uh, more to their um, to their appointment because I love their hands. Uh, and I really often use them as a models. So I would always allocate half an hour extra. Uh, but I wouldn't really worry about the time. Like, I think up to two hours, it is acceptable. Like, especially with all this uh, crazy nail art and coffee-shaped nails, which everyone wants now, uh, as long as yes, you charge for them. The preference is now. Personally, I prefer the sculpted sets. I think they look really beautiful, really amazing, but they are much more expensive. They they take longer time and clients not necessarily wants to pay for them. So I'm, I'm not pushing my clients, you know, to get uh, the coffin shaped nails, uh, sorry, the sculpted nails. Um, if they want the tips, they will get the tips. Like, uh, because I understand like different people got different expectations and they also got different budget as well. Uh, so kind of giving the clients choice uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I'm not going to push anyone for, for coughing set, even if not coughing sculpted set meals, even if I prefer it uh, myself over the tips. What else I've got in here? Okay, here I've got Lorna that she struggled with the structure on the thumbnails because they look wider and flatter, uh, especially when I'm using my not dominant hand. I have created um, a playlist where I'm showing how to work with my left hand. This is another thing, guys. If you would check the video which I have created like a year and a half ago when cameraman was filing my nails with the e-file because I couldn't hold my uh, e-file in my left hand. Now I'm able to do it kind of fluent almost. Uh, so again, it is a matter of practice and I feel more confident with my left hand than I used to be before. Uh, so it's a matter of the practice. And if you want to get your thumbs um, slimmer, I have recorded tutorial, can't remember, it was in the last couple of days. It is not ready probably, it's not posted yet, but I have rec recorded a tutorial on two of my thumbs um, because one is really white and ugly and the other one is so nice, so so slim looking. Um, and the difference in between that is by pinching. And um, gosh, actually, this is going to be ugly, but I'm, I'm not sure if this will show. So this fan, the black cameraman just went out for cigarette. I need you. Okay, this fan, the black one is really white. And this fan is really nice. The gold one is really nice. And you can see it, the difference. and they both sculpt like set. Oh gosh, and I need to show you this one as well. Gosh, I'm struggling now. This one has a really nice C-curve, 
look at it really pinched and this one is not pinched as much so i would suggest to get a nice uh, thumb uh, you need to really uh... oh it was visible okay <laughs> you need to really pinch it uh, well and if you're working with the acrylics use like a um, tweezer if you're working with the gel you could use a pinching clamp and that will change quite a lot in your thumb shaping okay we've got next questions guys remember you can win the training as well i will pick up one winner all you have to do is share my channel so just like a main channel the dorota palitska nails and one of your social medias and um, hashtag dorota palitska so i can see if you don't it write in the comment down and then i will pick up the winner what else i've got hi hi guys uh... Then I've got Christine, which says that she would wish she could do the nails like the same speed because her takes hours. Mine used to take hours as well, really like, um, I, I used to take when the clients, and the clients are witnesses of that, um, when the clients, so say example, this set, I show you. Oh no, my mouse work. So this set, it took me probably three and a half to four hours those those ugly ugly uh, orangey flowers and pinks and all the stuff and then just because i wasn't confident i had didn't have my speed i didn't have the right products i wasn't um, good enough so once you practice practice you will get there and you will shorten your time don't concentrate on shortening the time so first of all learn how to do a perfect meal and then the time gradually will be shorter and shorter. I've got Karas, Crazy. Okay, I've got Christine saying, I'm quite good putting products on my not dominant hand. How do you manage to do yours? on my not the dominant hand how do you manage to do yours okay i'm not understanding 100 percent the question christine i'm quite good putting products on my not the dominant hand how do you manage to do yours on putting product on my not the dominant hand this is my not dominant left so putting the product with my right hand into left hand is very easy is the other way around it's more difficult but i have learned it with the practice i have like even simple things like picking up the glass and trying to do something with your left hand to to get it more more exercise i would say it will give you a better control over holding the brush holding the file and that will improve how you do it i i couldn't honestly i couldn't do it my uh, I couldn't use my not dominant hand to do the set of the nails i have to ask the cameraman many times i actually i've got the set i can show guys He's not in here. If you want, I can show you what set of the nails he did it for me twice. Yes, he did nails for me twice. And that was a few years ago. If you want to see it, I can, I can show you the pictures. He's not in here. Let me do it. I need to. Uh, let me do it. Quickly, quickly before he comes in. So I've got one picture. I've got second picture. I'll show you the nails which cameraman did. Mm. Okay, so I need to go to Facebook. I've got it here. He can't cheat on me either because I got access to his messenger. <laughs> okay, let me go into her messages. There we are. I need to show you this. One. Save image. Two. Okay, I'll show you guys what a camera man kneels did. So the first ever set, and that was a training, he was on the training, and he did this set for me. 
not too bad, but I was so horrible teacher like, and I was so fussy that he had no choice. He had to make a nice meals. So they was done on me, like really old picture. And he had to learn how to do the meals because obviously um, I'm more like, I was more the salon side. He was more like a distribution of the products and all this stuff. So he had to know um, what is a primer, how the gel works, how long to cure the meals. So he could advise like the people which was interested in the product. So he had to do the training with me as well, how to do the meals. Uh, so you can see his work too. And what else we've got in here, guys? Okay, Tracy, cross the fingers for you. Hi, Karas. Yes, I love the gems team as well. Like, absolutely gem crazy person. Yasmin, good luck. Miki, no, you didn't miss it a lot. Uh, you, but you need to watch it like uh, how crap at the news I was when I started. Good luck, guys. Uh, Beth, he's saying, I told you, uh, the cameraman, is he saying, I told you, not yet, I think, you know, now I, I have got always big dreams, so what, now we started this channel, and um, I want to really grow it, up, like, really strong, I want the button, and the button is, I think, for a uh, hundred thousand subscribers, so I'm not happy yet, <laughs> and he can't say, I bet yet, but once I get the button, then he can say that, and I will say thank you to the cameraman for um, for uh, pushing on um, going back into the channel. Hi, from Israel. I had a cousin in the Israel. She was a beautiful, she is a beautiful model, a beautiful country. Uh, it's okay, guys. I will try to do it more often, uh, the lives, Jenny. Don't worry, you will catch me uh, on some other ways, uh, on some other ones. <laughs> And then I've got baby. I'm glad the videos keep you motivated. I really want to guys keep you motivated, like uh, because the motivation is a key to the success. And the more you practice, the better you will get. For those of you who have missed a couple things, so that's the news done by the cameraman. And then my first ever stiletto news. Oh my goodness, the, the, those pinky orangey something ish. That's my first ever stiletto nails, and then that's how I do the stiletto nails now. So it just shows you the practice makes perfect. Do you rate soft gel nails? E... Juliet. Okay, I will go first to Juliet questions. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, she, she, he is, he made really great job for getting me back into the YouTube channel. I'm not the natural born teacher. I think I, I took some trainings, like I had to take a, a lots of educator trainings as well. It doesn't happen like this, but when it comes to education, I might show you another story. So when eventually I start improving my skills, I wanted something more. I wanted to become the new educator and teach others how to do the news. So I was searching even more trainings and every single time I felt disappointed. I was so angry. I spent the money on the training. I was feeling like, no, this is so wrong. And the reason for it is I find it lots of times educators, teachers don't tell us truth, don't tell us everything, don't tell us their secrets. And that's a big game changer because like, see, this is example. And um, I was uh, learning how to do the 3D acrylic flowers. And the teacher put something, the educator put something to their monomer, but they didn't tell us what they put into their monomer. And their flowers was amazing. Our flowers wasn't that amazing. And all it was, it was a couple drops of the acetone to make your monomer to speed up the polymerization process. And once I have added those drops into my monomer as well, later on in the house, I was able to do much better flowers. So I was really disappointed at this training and I promised it myself I want to be an educator and I want to be an educator which is sharing all the tricks and secrets and tips because those little things are really crucial uh, to make someone's life much much easier, to improve someone's work, uh, 
like it, it can be really simple things like as adding those few drops of the acetone into the monomer to get a better 3d flowers and this is something which you don't see and same for a one stroke when 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 someone is watching how to paint the one stroke, it looks like we are shaking the hand, but we really don't shake the hand because that's the camera doesn't catch anything. So that's why I always uh, mention it so much in this video that I'm really not shaking my hand. I'm just more lifting and tapping uh, uh, the hand rather than shaking because this is a big game changer uh, as well. But there's lots of more tips and I'm always trying to share them uh, because I promise myself, I don't want any students feel the same way I was feeling on the training or I don't want any, same the tutorials, like I'm not going to probably guys show you like, I don't know, those perfect stiletto nails because I need like, or or a perfect, like the most perfect and amazing set of the nails. I wouldn't be able to show you that on the tutorial when I'm talking. Because when I'm working with the really precise work, like say face painting, say example, and I want to do the eyelashes, I cannot talk, I re really need to focus, I really need to be in my kind of concentrated mood to create something like amazing. And when I'm doing a demos for your YouTube, I rather to, instead of like trying to, I don't know, do something perfect and show off, like hold my breath and paint like, and don't speak to you for half an hour because I'm painting eyelashes now or I'm painting a beautiful flower and it has to be beautiful so I'm not talking to you and I'm not telling you what I'm doing. I'd rather to paint maybe a bit more, to me, a bit more ugly flower but then talk to you because when I'm talking obviously we, we've got those handshakes so you are never as precise when you're talking. Uh, but I, I want to talk to you, I want to tell you why I'm doing some things. I'm not bothered as much about my work. I have Oh gosh, don't want it to sound bad. I have created, a, I have won a few competitions. I have been traveling like, you know, Australia, Iran, Ireland, Netherlands, uh, uh, Iceland, like, you know, a few different places, countries. And, and I don't need to show off in my videos like how amazing flower I can paint. I rather to show you how you can paint it. It's really good. What is important so you can get it right rather than trying to show off like and, and just concentrate on painting and don't tell you any tips and tricks. Um, and this has been always a priority to me on any kind of training when I'm doing a demo tips. I would spend maybe 15 minutes on my demo tip even if it will be earlier, because normally in a house I would need maybe an hour to paint a beautiful face, say example, but on the training I want to spend only 15 minutes just so my so I can spend more time with my students and I can go to them, I can touch their hands, I can show them how to hold the brush. Oh, actually, how to hold the brush, and this is a tip I need to tell you as well, how to hold the brush. Um, so I will go to questions as well. Sorry guys, I'm always too excited when I talk about the nails. Um, when we're holding a nail brush, Actually, I've got one in here. So when we're holding a nail brush, it is very important that you hold your nail brush the same way you would hold the pen. Because and now if you've got a piece of paper and a pen, pick up a pen and hold it the way you hold your brush. If you can write your name really nice and clear, that's mean you're holding your brush good. If you cannot write it at nice, that's mean you are holding your nail brush wrong. Because you need a full control over your brush the same way like you've got full control over your pen. So this is a really game changer tip as well for for you guys. Um, and I think I never mentioned it in any of the tutorials. Uh, what else we've got in here? Do you rate soft gel nails? Okay, soft gel. Soft gel is for me the soft of gel. I do it on the natural nails. I'm not the fan of the, and I have another good question. I'm not the fan of the soft gel for a larger extensions. We need to really build your gel like a pretty decent, uh, uh, decent product. And I'm definitely a gel girl. Like I prefer hard gel over any other products. I prefer hard gel over the poly gel, which is similar consistency to the acrylic. So I think that poly gel is amazing for the people which work with the acrylic because it gives you an extra time to perfect it. Um, and I'm the person where I slap the product on and the gel has to work for me. I just push it in a place as I want it. I don't want to spend too much time with it. But from the yesterday post, I've got still more questions. And I've got Susie asking me, 
I'm a beginner from my experience. I only use alcohol to de dehydrate and clean my nails. I have had not any issues with bre breaking or tear off. My question is, have you tried only using alco alcohol for dehydrated? Okay, uh, so you can use the alcohol to dehydrate the nails. Um, of course you can use it, the alcohol. <laughs> And usually if you run out of the nail dehydrator, which is a blue scrub, you would use the alcohol to dehydrate it. But I think alcohol is a more kind of old way substitution of the product uh, where you didn't have a proper dehydrator. See, the blue scrub, it also has some antifungal uh, ingredients in there as well. I mean, alcohol kills bacteria too. So you can absolutely use the alcohol, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like you shouldn't have any issues. I, I'm just so used to of using the blue scrub. Then I got question from Cheryl. Yes, I have a question. Is soaking off or filing the best way to remove acrylics? Okay. So I personally, I personally prefer filing off any kind of product. And the reason for it is not because the soaking off damages the nails, because the soaking off itself, like acetone, doesn't damage the nails. It's more the fact that we never wait long enough for the product to be completely soft enough to be soaked off from the nails. And quite often we scrape the product off from the nail. And then that's when the damage happens. Why when we file off, we can gradually swap from the harder grit to the softer grit without of damaging the natural nail. And I find that the nails are better conditioned after filing off rather than soaking off. But if you take really your time as well to soak off the nails and you wouldn't scrape it, so basically you wouldn't use any tools to, to, to take the product off, you would kind of almost do it with your, with your finger or something very soft, then soaking off it is good as well. But as I say, most of the time we don't soak off the nails. We scrape off the nails and that's what is really damaging. That's why I prefer filing. And I got here... Uh, I've got here a question from Vicky. I wonder how long have you been doing nails? So I finished the training 2000, December 2005. In December 2009, we have opened our salon, but before that, I have tried only a couple of times. Again, cameraman <laughs> bought me some nail set from Argos, like uh, in UK, that's a kind of shop which has everything. It wasn't the best set, and I was so fed up. Like, you know, it was taking me like four or five hours to do a set of the ugly nails, and I give up. I didn't want to do it. Then also at the time, I had no language skills, so I was working as a kitchen porter in a hotel in, in one of the local hotels. But I really liked it, my nail art skills I have learned on the training. And I start painting it on the plates. So they moved me from the kitchen uh, porter to doing the desserts. And then I was doing sweeties. I could uh, learn uh, better English. Uh, and I could use my kind of nail skills in a, in a kitchen. Uh, but to do them every day, it was probably beginning of 2010 when I have been doing them for a client, like, cause that was the time when I slowly started getting single clients uh, when we opened the salon. As I say before, we, when we opened the client, I had not even a single client. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> then another question. Uh, I've got here Toti, which asked me a question. She's still learning. And when she does the gel polish, the enhancement is uneven around the cuticle area. How to blend that area to leave a nice smooth finish? I work a lot with uh, the e file. Okay, so in, in general, Toti, you would, uh, I'm always blending the area in around the cuticle, like with the file. You can use e file, doesn't matter what you use, is it a hand file or e file, but the area has to be completely blended in, like same way like you would blend the tip with the natural nail. You cannot, like when I'm, you really need to check some of my sculpting tutorials when I'm showing, like going with the finger and I'm showing like there's no catchy place. You cannot see where the gel or acrylic or any other product is starting uh, because it's all 
so blended to the cuticle area. So you need to file it with really a little bit more, like kind of blend it through it. And it will also make your nails last longer as well. Okay, let me see the other questions here. Uh... <laughs> I'm start losing the voice. I've got Janice. Uh, have tried the baby boomer your way it was really easy thank you yes my baby boomer way is so easy I mean easy in general everything what you try is not easy by the first time so don't give up try it second time and then by the third time you will get it right guys um, but I, I love uh, sponge that baby boomer so much quicker I've got Claudia hi and then I got Debbie, which is quicker at the sculpted nails because it takes her ages to size the tips and she didn't use them over the years. See, when I'm teaching my students, when they come in for the for a training, what I'll oh I, I wish to have a flip chart here as well. I'm going to get a flip chart for the next live because then I could paint as well what I want to show. Uh, but what I always do is when I've got my students, I will take uh, my hand and draw my hand on the piece of paper and then draw the nails and tell the size of the tips because if you know your hand size tips then the client sizing is so easy and what i do i pick up the tip straight away glue in pick up the tip glue in pick up the tip glue in and then it doesn't take long time so the pinky is always the smallest and it has a size like i'm talking about the nail perfect tips it will have a size 10 and then this one will have a size uh, six, this one will have a size five, this one will have size seven, and this one will have a size um, three. And if I know my size, if the client's hand is exactly the same, it has exactly the same size. If it's smaller, I would pick up one size smaller tips. If it's bigger, I would pick up one size uh, bigger tip. Uh, so that was a game changer for me. And on the training, they also teach me to pick up the tip, put it on the table, pick up another tip, put it on the table. And once you had all 10 tips on the table, then you could pick them up and start applying on the hands. Don't do that. Like, I mean, I had so many girls joining us and to work in a salon and they were still using this, this old school. What a point, like you're measuring the tip and if it's right, you just glue it in. There's no point to put it back on the table and then picking it up again, because this is all time. And um, another thing when it comes to shortening your time, when you're doing set of nails, make sure you've got all your products always at the same place. So in a salon setup, I would have all my gels in here. My glue scrub is there. Just behind my glue scrub, I've got the UV cleanser. Then I've got the nail wipes, so they're really easy to pick up. On this uh, side, I would have my files and my gel brush, the universal airborne, the nail prep. So I know all my products where they are, and this way it's much quicker. Like even the tips, they go under there, just on top of it, there is uh, tip cutter and I'm so always annoyed when someone moves my stuff about uh, same my glitter draw I've got glitters which are my favorites um, on the front and when I go with my hand I want to be able to pick up that right glitter because I know what it is so I'm really really annoyed when someone pick up and mix my glitters or place them into the different place because uh, then it's just so time consuming to find everything what else I've got in here I've got Monica, she is new. What do you think? What do you think of the polygel pop of forms? Okay. I'm not it looks cool, it looks super quick and easy, but it is like I'm I'm never going to be a fan probably of those all new things coming out like poly gels, those uh, du dual tips like where you just pop the product in and you've got a perfect uh, shape extensions because for me like annoying part would be what about the natural nail underneath because th this this product is on top of your nail and uh, so you'll have like a weak jump when the nail grow I like my nails to be sculpted so when they grow underneath the natural nail is joined in with the product and I don't have a jump because when you've got those jump i think it will be easier for the water and everything go underneath and it, it could be also more ugly uh, looking because uh, the nail is not properly sealed that's what i think about it but it looks super easy and super quick to do it uh, so why not and um, um, what else 
how to get followers can you help with how to get followers okay i've got a brush of perfection asking about how to get more followers love what you do <laughs> and do it constantly what this mean is like when i open up the facebook page um you, you cannot do it the way like you you open up your page and then you put a post like once a month then you put the post like every day then you put it nothing for half a year you have to be consistent with it and this well you will build up your audience you have to also communicate with your audience and you want sometimes see this is a good thing as well um again don't go for the number go for a quality uh because uh, say example even on this channel thank you so much guys we we've got what 42000 subscribers i mean it's amazing honestly when we reactivated the channel it was like just over 10000 so thank you so much guys like i really appreciate it but what i feel for like for a youtube it is still small amount i mean the youtube can have millions like subscribers but for this this amount of the people we've got i would say we've got strong community guys like i mean the youtube like patrick's always patrick's yeah always watch the statistics he check like the um, how some other channels are doing and then he says to me you've got really high number of the likes on your videos or high number of the comments compared to the number of the views so that's mean you've got the strong community and you rather to have less people but the people which engage with you, the people which which feels you, which understands you, which likes you, rather than like followers, there are some people which even buy the followers. Like this is just a waste of money. You don't want those kind of people. You, they 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 just random people which are not even interested on your stuff. So you better off creating a small community. And I find it it is also amazing on my salon page. Um this is the best tip guys for those of you who run the business this is the best tip i can ever give you we i've got my page on facebook dorota Pajska international new artist and this is a page where i can have people from all over the world like i will have people from poland hungary like uh, usa like different countries lots of different people different places because they want to follow my work and i, I and i invite people from different places but also I have a salon place and you never have seen me sharing my salon even name. Like, okay, maybe you have seen it, the salon name, but I am not sharing with you guys my salon page. And the reason for it is I don't want this people to follow my salon page. Why? If I get people following my page from United States, from Hungary, from Poland, then I put the picture of the neons I have created in a salon and this picture will show only to the people in Poland. I don't want this picture to be shown to the people in Poland. I want this picture to be shown only to the people which are in Fort William because that's where I live and that's where I want to get clients for the neons. So this is only the people I want to have on this page. So on the salon page, we've got about 4,000 people only and and not only i think it's a really high number but i don't want to have any more and i don't share like some neon technician have their salon page and they will share it in a groups or anything like that i don't share from my salon page because i don't want any random people even if they interested on the news but the people which are not my potential customers for a salon i don't want them to join this page because then they will be seeing the posts instead of the people which live in portfolio hope that makes sense and that's why i've got the separate page where uh, dorota palitska where i've got um, many more followers from different places and then i want to show off my new work and i want to share it in the groups and get as many likes as possible okay so if you can separate it like depends what is your goal and why you need those followers but uh, again better to have less but a good uh, but a good um, good quality gosh you can't say good quality on the people but people which really want to follow you not because you push them to follow you if that makes sense uh oh yes you guys you wanted to really see his work <laughs> uh, yes 
because you don't really get rid of snails. Can you please tell me which of your heart gels is the prettiest pink, like a ballet sleeper pink? Okay, ballet sleeper pink, it would be the soft pink, but it's lighter, just a touch lighter. Soft pink from the fiber gel would be like a really nice soft pink color. Uh, the light rose is more peachy pink, but I prefer it because the natural neon bed is not as pink. It, yeah, I prefer it. Uh, there is a video when I'm showing those designer set. If you could search it, designer set, uh, the black and uh, gold bars, and I'm showing all different colors. They look really good because you can see them against each other. Uh, but I would say uh, you probably would like the soft pink one. And remember guys, just, I, I'm still trying to catch up with all the questions. Uh, so you can win the face training painting by sharing my channel on your social media, hashtag Dorota Palicka, and then write in this live that you have done it. And I will be able to pick up the, uh, the winner tomorrow once the life goes up. Mm -hmm. And here I've got how come in the salon when you do rebalance that you never clean clients meals from underneath? OK, this is a good question. I've got Kalanit. How come in a salon when you do rebalance that you never clean clients meals from underneath? I don't because it's, I don't. <laughs> Because it's an extra service, you have to pay for it. Yeah, I can paint them. I can then drill them out from underneath. And then I can apply the glitter. I can remove the old set and put a new set. But this is an extra service. So in a salon, people request different services. And I'm showing you what they request. Yeah, that's the reason why I don't do it. <laughs> uh, even oh no i'm not going yes i'm going i'm not going yes i'm going i'm not going oh my goodness i'm i'm not no this is bad but this is a new tech light as well again if i would get the clients i don't know which will have a cake underneath of the nails i'm not going to take it out either i'm not okay hope you're happy with this the answer kind then i've got tammy I am trying to master the one stroke technique as well, but it seems so hard. Do you always use acrylic paint or can you use gel pastels too? How can I buy your items? Okay, Tammy, so I prefer acrylic paints because when I'm painting complicated flowers, I would need to cure it every single petal because those petals go one on top of another. If you're painting a very simple flower, you can paint it all with the gel and then just uh, one layer and then just cure it. But um, I, I prefer acrylic paints because it is air drying, so I don't have to cure it. But of course you can do it with the gels and there are some people which do amazing work with the gel. Uh, it's probably easier even to maybe mix the colors, but it's harder because you have to cure it each, each layer. And then you can buy it from my website, which is www.dorotaparitska.com. Then my daughter and I have both hammer thumbs. It took me a year to get it done with sculpting. I feel I'm still not happy all the time sculpt is with form. Is that a good way to sculpt them perfect? I would say, again, pinching would be very, very helpful, like when you're sculpting the thumbs, because then you can get a really nice, uh, slim look to them. And then I've got Jenny, do you do training courses on applying the forms and sculpting as only train it in tips and acrylic application? Yes, I do all new related trainings. Cameraman, can you pass me a Red Bull? Yeah, <laughs> I need something to drink. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the jammies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. I just need to get my voice back. Cool. Okay. So yes, I do the training. All new related, uh, anything new related. Um, and I do the scope things. In general, I would say. Some trainings are good to be done online, 
but you kind of get such a quality training when you're face to face with someone. And I do one to one trainings where I can really uh, get them designed to the specific person, to their problems, like what I can pick up, what is their uh, biggest struggle, and we can really concentrate on those mistakes so she could improve it. Because there's no point to learn something which you already know. So I usually try to customize and those one to one sessions are definitely best in Fort William, of course. Uh, but then I do. I do travel like we have done like lots of um, trainings uh, abroad as well like when uh, some salon owners or like a distributor uh, distributor centers they invite me as well and then they set up the theme and the class and we we teach uh, different numbers of the students like or, or do the demos like for for lots of uh, different people as well but you are always more than welcome to come into Fort William for a one-to-one -one training on the form application there's also a free tutorial on the youtube as well how to apply the new forms so if you're searching for any subject say example how to apply the forms just write in youtube palitska or dorota and then how to put the forms or how to do baby boomer palitska or how to apply the tips how to do a new prep so any kind of subject you're interested on just search and it should come up because we've got few hundreds videos guys like it is a few hundred right, videos 400, 400 cameraman yeah, says yeah, yeah. yeah nearly 400 videos so i'm sure there is an answer for your question if not then just write in the comments um in the comments under any other video because i read them all always always and i really appreciate them uh, and i will try to produce this video as well and uh, yes i'm trying to be honest about the teachers uh I find the new word so, and I've got Debbie. I found the new word so secret, and I trained it over 30 years ago. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It is definitely they, like everyone keeps the information for themselves only. I think you are the best new artist. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Christine. Uh... Okay, I've got here Totti. Do you have a suggestion for creating a smile line for sculpted French nails that we do not create an extended or reverse nail bed? Oh, yes, I do. Paint on French. Paint on French. Paint on French. Just search the Rota Paliska paint on French. It's so easy. It's so amazing. It's so quick for rebalance. And I'm so in love with it because it's, it's just amazing. Like, so... You don't have to do a reverse smiling or what you do is just you sculpt the cover gel pink or cover acrylic pink and then you just paint French on top of it so the clients comes back for it. First of all, it's much easier because you're just doing in a, um, one color of the gel or acrylic. Then you paint your perfect smile line, which can be so really happy and like really deep, like the corners perfect, everything amazing about the smile line. Actually, I will show you. Why? No, oh, I love this one. I was showing them your nails. <laughs> no, this one doesn't have smile line. Oh no. But I did tutorial on the smile lines. Um, there is lots of really like just just search Dorota Palitska French, and they will be not the last French I put it on. It was a requested by one of the students which sign up for a training in Netherlands. And this is the every new technician nightmare, the sculpted reverse smile and French. It's just so time consuming, so impractical, so, oh my goodness. But paint on French is amazing, Serge that. Then... One thing, you have 15% of the battery. 15% of the battery. Okay, guys, I need to hurry up. Remember, you can also win the free training. Just share this channel. Hashtag Dorota Paitska and right here, done. And I will pick up the winner tomorrow. So we've got 15% battery and we will keep running this live until the battery dies. Yeah. Unless cameraman wants to bring the, the plug and the charger. No, it wouldn't work. Okay, then let's me, okay. I'm trying to answer the next questions. Uh, do you, okay, so that was, is the fiber gel better than the regular gel? Okay, so it's depending, depending on the clients. And I, Kelly asking, so I love the fiber gel on my nails, like, and I would say lots of my clients, like the nails really love the fiber gel because fiber gel has those, it is a sculpting gel. It's like a normal bulldier gel uh, with extra fibers inside. So you're able to create a slightly thinner nails, which are stronger 
okay and that's what i love about it like because i'm the fan of those nails which are more on the thinner slender side and um and the fiber gel is perfect for that it's also great like for like it's actually great like i've got uh, some pterygium that's a part of like a skin cuticle which grows into my nail plate on this finger and quite often i could have some lifting on this place with the fiber gel i have noticed i've got less lifting but then also i have a clients which their nails don't like the fiber gel and then i'm using those actually i've got it here to hand i use the avoted soak of build your gel and those soak of build your gel is very flexible so i've got a lady which has very short nail beds they are thin like a papers and uh, they're working too much underneath of the product so they would lift with the fiber gel but when i'm using this and um, she can go for a short extensions and she has no liftings nothing at all but then for the other client this gel wouldn't be good because they're going for a long coffin or long stiletto shape and this wouldn't be as strong enough because it's so cable gel and it's never as uh, as strong then the led gels the transparent pink is a really good gel as well and crystal one say there is also you can quite often see me working on the channel as well with the um, the old crystal one led gel of the fiber gel clear because i prefer the consistency of it like for me the fiber gel clear is too thick consistency and i prefer those watery one which i'm just applying over the glitter encapsulation so i think it is a personal personal preferences because <laughs> they they all got uh, different consistency and uh, yeah, different consistency. I would say my, my favorite one is the Fiber Gel uh, Light Rose. I love it because it's, it's so natural cover, like natural cover looking. Then the Soft Pink Fiber Gel is amazing for a baby boomer. Then Crystal One from LED Range. So I prefer it over the um, Fiber Gel Clear. Uh, so that will be my third favorite gel then it will be probably the transparent pink from led range and then the so-called aborted one and then the um i am not the fan of uh, so from the fiber gel soft pink and trans and uh, light rose and i'm not the fan of the clear fiber gel like that's probably you have uh, didn't see me using it often uh yeah because i'm not the fan of it but in general all the products i'm using that's uh, basically what we do like the neil perfect has like lots of products like there's thousands of the products what i'm doing each time when there's a new product coming out i'm buying one piece of this product so i would buy one piece of the product i will test it on me i will test it on the clients my girls will like which i'm working with will test it on their clients as well we get like um, feedbacks and 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 once i'm really sure uh, once i'm really sure of it and i'm happy then we can um, we can start buying more of this product and also resell it as well okay my doggy love me now i've got another questions here how could you stop getting okay hi how can you stop getting air bubbles in the gel polish okay so air bubbles in the gel polish what you do probably okay no you wait you have been in a snow yes you've been in a snow he will talk with me in a minute have you been in the snow so when you've got the gel polish and you would go and shake like this you will create air bubbles also when you open the product and you go with your brush like really too many times like this each time you are going to introduce the air bubbles inside this bottle as well. So when you've got a gel polish and you want to mix it, you put it upside down and you should go like this. Oh. We don't oh, see even cameraman, cameraman <laughs> knows that because he has been attending every single new training with me, like sometimes um, traveling so many hours and then and then sitting in a room as well. Like, but you're rolling this one like this, and then also you go going and you gently remove the excess of the product and then you can paint the nail so don't don't go like this and don't um, create many bubbles and the same when we applying the product over the natural uh, over the nails you would um, you would take the 
uh, product uh, on your brush and keep it all the time in touch with the needle. You don't lift it up because each time when you lift it up, you are introducing the air bubbles to your uh, to your needles. Then we've got another question. Mm, can you can you make a video showing on a real hand the different ways to position a needle form from a different shape of needles, short to long, wide and skinny, and also the position for a different shape? Okay, so yes, I can do the video of that, for sure, I can. And then, and then, yes, I will do the video. I've got, in general, I want all my forms straight or a little bit up, but I will try to put it down as a request. So I've got Jen, I'm hurting myself when I use my cuticle cutter and the file that I end up not getting all the skin off. And I think this is why my nails are lifting and popping off. Okay, so the, the, uh, you don't need to take all the skin off. You only remove the cuticles from the nail plate. So we always clean the nail. There is a video, video coming up, like we have recorded, how to properly prep the nails. And I've got also another one. And I would do really recommend that you watching this video, why the nails are lifting. So just search Palitska, nails lifting. And then there's a one video of when I'm showing on the client when I had a problematic nails with lifting. There is also a tutorial talking about like um, different re reasons why the nails might lift because they might lift example because you have washed your hair and it has lots of hair conditioner on your nail plate and that's why they are lifting um, because you are having some illness or hormones. So any, co any other um, reasons why they are lifting so definitely recommended checking that we've got five percent battery thanks good point on pops off i should could allow for bacteria yeah then i've got i ask it uh, vicky i ask it if you could do more videos with the acrylic uh, paint and five minutes later okay that's a video so i'm trying to answer the questions uh, I've got questions. Uh, do you find it difficult to do videos because English is not your first language? I'm, I mean, I'm Portuguese and I think I don't get subscribers because of my English. Um, oh, it is sometimes, it is, it is not. I don't know. So I must say, because I'm living here the last 16 years and most of the times I have been doing the news here, I don't know some of the names in Polish. I don't know some of the terminology in Polish. So I don't think so. In a new subject, it is easier for me to, to do it in Polish. I think it will be easier for me to do it in English. Maybe I pronounce some words wrong and I know that. And, and probably that's why I say new so funny because it is a word which I keep repeating constantly. And if someone writes me in the comments like, you pronounce Niels so funny, then I start changing the way I pronounce them and then it works out even worse. So I'm trying to remember, don't listen, don't listen, just do it and say it this way. And another thing, guys, I'm, I have learned English, Scottish from the locals here. We live up in the Scottish Highlands, which are in the middle of nowhere. And then I pick what up the language, place. a beautiful place, absolutely beautiful place. But I pick up the language from the locals here, you know, so like it's slightly different to what you would hear like an American English and uh, even in England, I think it will be a different pronunciation of some of the words. And uh, so maybe that's why it is also more difficult to understand. But just keep going. Don't give up. Like my I was I, I am still conscious about my language. I am really. And sometimes it might, it can make me even upset or I would like to say something and I can't, but just, just try to ignore it. And another tip I can give you, if you're going public, like see opening up the channel means you are going to public. You need to be prepared for different things. Say like, I don't know, like any kind of critics, any kind of negative words as well. I have been really lucky. I don't get many of them, but yes, I do get them sometimes as well. Like, or say example, like, how do you wipe yourself with those long nails? So I have created actually um, pictures step by step that I'm using a crystal seat toilet with the glitter roll paper. 
The video? No, yeah. no, that was the how I wipe with stiletto nails. So when I pose, when I had that wash my hands. The shoes. No, but that's not this ah, one. I'm talking okay. about how I wipe uh, how on I wipe. the glitter toilet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm trying to take it in a funny way. My toes are getting cold. Uh, we have so much snow like uh, lying down, and this is uh, we've got the white floor in there. Not lucky. Okay, what else we've got in here? Hello, I'm new to... And in general, be yourself. Uh, could you please do a video on how to use e-file? I will do a little bit. See, another thing is, guys, it is really hard to run the YouTube channel as well. I want to show you as much as possible as I can, but also some things can be really dangerous in someone who is unqualified and is going to use it. So there are some things which I'm not sure if I want to like kind of show it 100% if if that makes sense and e-file is a one of the things which I'm showing really little just because I don't want someone to damage their nails or a client's nails and I'm really conscious about it but yes I will do some tutorials because then I can include really important points in it uh, so that would be useful I don't know acrylic soon I try acrylic I'm, I'm I had a client come in with rough meat under her nails from when she fixed dinner I had to take it out as I couldn't stand okay it's it seems to be a part of the service yes depends like obviously I'm but yeah um I think years ago it was different as well because I had the clients booked in I had the clients booked in for the um, manicure. So you were supposed to get your manicure done maybe a couple days before you was getting your extensions done and maybe a hand paraffin treatment and everything. And then the extensions. And now people want everything at once, like the quickest possible and the cheapest possible option. Uh, so um, it, it is a diff be more difficult to be a nail technician this times now. And we've got probably two or three percent of the battery and uh, guys if you have enjoyed it we could actually when we in lockdown we could do it twice more often when we can have a we we chat because it's different than answering those questions uh, in the comments than answering them live because it's almost like a conversation uh, i work with gel science 1996 always with ibd for me it is great what do you think of ibd ibd was the first brand i started with and the company Okay, so the IBD is an amazing brand. And if you love their consistency, you would love the Neil Perfect as well, because I saw from IBD, 